Now we are going to discuss sutures and anastomosis. Sutures and anastomosis. Okay. So first we are going to discuss that what are the types of sutures. So sutures can be divided into absorbable sutures and non-absorbable sutures. Absorbable suture means the term is self-explanatory. It is absorbed in tissues because of phagocytosis or enzymatic digestion and non-absorbable means it is not absorbed it means it is going to persist in tissues for indefinite period of time okay so see the differences first types of sutures so absorbable sutures and non-absorbable sutures non-absorbable clear so first important point absorbable sutures are absorbed in tissues absorbed in tissues because of enzymatic digestion and enzymatic digestion and phagocytosis right and non absorbable sutures these are going to persist for indefinite period persist for indefinite period okay now there is further division that absorbable and non-absorbable sutures are further divided into natural and synthetic so what are natural absorbable sutures chromic catgut and catgut so catgut and chromic catgut are natural absorbable sutures what are natural non absorbable sutures silk and linen okay so see the natural absorbable sutures is catgut and chromic catgut catgut and chromic catgut okay and natural non absorbable suture and this is silk and linen silk and linen okay after that what are the synthetic absorbable sutures so synthetic absorbable sutures include polyglycoprone polydioxanone vicryl dexin and what are the synthetic non absorbable sutures proline ethylene nylon right this list is important because it is frequently asked so you have to remember synthetic absorbable sutures and synthetic non absorbable sutures right so synthetic absorbable sutures polyglycoprone polydioxanone polydioxanone are also known as pds in short form okay vicryl and dexan right now see important questions polyglycoprone is also known as monocryl vicryl is also known as polyglactin and dexan is also known as polyglycolic acid you have to remember the names so polyglycoprone the other name it's also known as monocryl okay vicryl the other name is polyglactin and dexan other name is polyglycolic acid simple so how to remember the mnemonic is can you see pvd so pvd means polyglycoprone polydioxanone vicryl dexan so how to remember the mnemonic is pvd now synthetic non absorbable sutures proline what is the other name of proline it is also known as polypropylene second is polyester polyester and ethylene nylon clear so how to remember here the mnemonic is pen so the mnemonic for synthetic non absorbable suture is pen so pen means proline polyester ethylene nylon clear so this is important after that sutures are further divided into monofilament and polyfilament sutures okay now see the difference in monofilament suture there is a single strand of fiber smooth and strong so if there is a single strand of fiber this is monofilament 
and if in the suture there are multiple strands multiple strands braided together so if can you see multiple strands are braided together have you seen a rope so you have seen there are multiple strands so here you can see multiple strands braided together so in between strands can you see there is space and because of this space this space is known as crevices so because of this space what's the problem there is increased risk of infection if we see the monofilament sutures in monofilament sutures since it is it is smooth and strong there is no crevices so it is associated with decreased risk of infection but in polyfilament sutures since there is crevices or presence of space between the strands there is increased risk of infection second problem monofilament suture what is the problem the knots are less stable and that's why in monofilament sutures we take how many knots six to eight knots and in polyfilament suture the advantage is that knots are more stable and that's why three to four knots are sufficient so see the differences between monofilament and polyfilament sutures clear so monofilament means mono so there is single strand so these sutures have single strand and these are smooth and strong smooth and strong the good thing that since there is a single strand decreased risk of infection because there are no crevices so crevices are not there but the problem the knots are less stable so the knots tied become loose so knots can become loose that's why these are less stable how many knots we take that's why we take six to eight knots with monofilament sutures if you have seen laparotomy whenever we are closing the rectus sheath in laparotomy you have seen the surgeon is closing the rectus sheath with proline and you have seen that how many knots surgeon is going to take generally six to eight knots with proline and you must be knowing that proline is a monofilament suture so what are the examples of monofilament sutures mnemonic is pen so we discussed so here proline ethylon nylon okay all these are monofilament sutures now see polyfilament so it's poly it means there are multiple strands and these multiple strands are braided together so these are braided together clear the advantage is that this suture is easy to handle so this is easier to handle another advantage that the knots are stable knots are stable so generally how many knots we take we take three to four knots but the problem that there is presence of crevices between the strands and because of these crevices there is increased risk of infection so there is increased risk of infection clear so indirectly this question will be asked that if there is evidence of infection or we are suspecting that the wound will be infected and we are supposed to put the suture which one is preferred to prevent infection surgical site infection which suture should be preferred it's the monofilament suture right what are the examples of polyfilament sutures so how to remember the mnemonic is slip okay so you can easily understand s silk linen and p p is polyglycolic acid also known as dexan so s that is silk this is linen and this is polyglycolic acid and what is the other name it's the dexan clear so it's very very easy to remember because you know the mnemonics now if you have seen the trend of or pattern of questions from the last five years in aims neat and in inicet you have noticed that almost every year there is minimum one question from sutures minimum one and what kind of questions are asked nowadays these are image based questions generally they give the image of suture or 
image of packet of suture and what is the good thing about the packet of suture that the suture name is already written on the packet so it's very easy to identify so one by one we are going to discuss let's first discuss the cat cut now see this was the image based question in neat pg can you see here it's written what it is cat gut so be careful cat gut is not the cat gut it is the sheep gut which part of sheep gut ileum which layer of ileum it is the submucosa okay so see the questions related to cat gut it is prepared from first who discovered cat gut john hunter clear so it is prepared from sheep gut which layer is the submucosa so it is prepared from submucosa of sheep's ileum generally sheep's ileum okay you know that this is absorbable suture what kind of natural absorbable suture and if you have opened cat gut in the ot you have noticed that there is a fluid or liquid in which this cat gut is immersed so it is having a preservative solution having good smell so why there is preservative solution because it is natural absorbable suture if no preservative will be there it will be degraded by bacteria so question what is that preservative solution used so it is isopropyl alcohol isopropyl alcohol clear this is frequently asked question so preservative solution is isopropyl alcohol after that there are two types of questions asked one that tensile strength of suture is lost in and second the suture is absorbed in these two are two different questions so that's why in exam you have to read the question carefully that whether in the question tensile strength is lost is asked or in how many days suture is absorbed this question is asked so if you see cat gut here the 50 percent tensile strength it is lost in three days so 50 percent tensile strength is lost in 15 day three days and all tensile strength all tensile strength is lost in 15 days clear so this is the question related to tensile strength now see the twist suture is absorbed in how many days 60 days so if the question is asked the suture is absorbed in how many days it is absorbed in 60 days and this is the question which is most commonly asked that in how many days cat gut is absorbed so it is absorbed in 60 days now see whenever this cat gut is tanned with chromium salt to improve the handling of suture and to resist the degradation this cat gut is known as chromic cat gut okay chromic cat gut clear so it is self-explanatory here cat gut is tanned with with salts it is tanned with chromium salt clear and what is the advantage why to improve the handling it improves the handling clear and it resists the degradation so it resists degradation of suture in tissue resists the degradation of suture in tissue now in how many days tensile strength is lost it is 21 to 28 days and the suture is absorbed in 60 to 90 days so here tensile strength it is lost in 21 to 28 days and the question which is asked that the suture is absorbed the suture is absorbed in 60 to 90 days now see this suture it's already written what's the name of this suture this is vicryl and what is the other name of vicryl it's polyglactin now how to identify this suture you can see what is the color of this suture the color of this suture is violet okay and if you see this suture carefully can you see that there are multiple strands braided together and simultaneously can you see that there is a space there are spaces these are known as crevices so what kind of suture is this 
दिस इज मोनोफिलामेंट सूचर और दिस इज अ पॉलीफिलामेंट सूचर सो वाइक्रिल इज अ पॉलीफिलामेंट सूचर ओके सो इट्स वाइक्रिल वॉट्स द अदर नेम ऑफ वाइक्रिल इट इज नोन एज ऑल्सो नोन एज पॉली ग्लैक्टिन पॉली ग्लैक्टिन सो इट इज को पॉलीमर ऑफ पॉली को पॉलीमर दिस इज को पॉलीमर ऑफ जी ग्लाइकोलाइड ग्लाइकोलाइड लैक्टिन लैक्टाइड क्लियर सो इट इज को पॉलीमर ऑफ ग्लाइकोलाइड एंड लैक्टाइड क्लियर इट इज डिलेड एब्जॉर्बेबल सूचर सो इट इज अ डिलेड एब्जॉर्बेबल सूचर एंड इट्स टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ इज मेंटेन्ड फॉर ट्वेंटी एट टू थर्टी डेज सो इट्स टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ इट्स मेंटेन्ड दिस इज मेंटेन्ड फॉर ट्वेंटी एट टू थर्टी डेज क्लियर ओके एंड इफ यू हैव सीन जनरल सर्जन्स especially in ot whenever we are operating or doing some kind of laparotomy resection and stenosis generally general surgeons are shouting for a suture which suture vicryl 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 so this is the suture which is considered as work horse suture for general surgeons so vicryl is the work horse work horse suture for general surgeons simple now there is one important question that the organs in which there is stone formation tendency like bile duct ureter bladder so the organs in which there is stone formation tendency are the organs in which stones are formed if we are supposed to use the suture for those organs which type of suture should be used it should be absorbable suture or non absorbable suture so obviously we cannot use non absorbable sutures for these organs like cbd ureter and bladder because if you are using non absorbable suture what will happen it will act as a nidus and what will happen there is stone formation that's why in these organs we are using absorbable suture and what kind of absorbable suture delayed absorbable suture and which one vicryl so generally this vicryl is used for these organs so vicryl it's a delayed absorbable suture that's why it is used in cbd it is used in ureter it is used in bladder right so how to remember the mnemonic is cub so mnemonic is cub clear so it is cbd ureter and bladder now see this image and you can see on this packet what is written monocryl so this is monocryl and monocryl is also known as polyglycoprone so the name of this suture is monocryl and it is also known as poly glycoprone glycoprone clear so poly it means it's a copolymer of what gly here how to remember glycolide and plus caprone so this is caprolactone so it is the copolymer of glycolide and caprolactone clear this was the image based question asked in aims and what was the question that which of the following suture is used for subcuticular suturing so this is the suture which is used for subcuticular suturing and this monocryl is absorbed in 90 to 120 days so two important questions it is used for subcuticular suturing subcuticular suturing clear and it is absorbed in absorbed in 90 to 120 days next is polyglycolic acid polyglycolic acid okay the suture and this is also known as dexan clear so first it is polymer of polyglycolic acid so this suture is polymer of polyglycolic acid and we discussed that polyglycolic acid is a polyfilament suture now the problem we discussed that in polyfilament sutures there is increased risk of infection 
and specially what is the big problem with this suture specially that this suture exhibits highest affinity for adherence to e coli and staph aureus this suture exhibits highest affinity for adherence to e coli and staph aureus and you must be knowing that this e coli and staph aureus are two important pathogens responsible for infection in surgery right so what is the biggest problem with this suture dexin that first it's a polyfilament that's why there is increased risk of infection and the second problem there is highest affinity suture is having highest affinity for adherence to e coli and staph aureus clear and this suture is absorbed in 60 to 90 days so suture is absorbed in 60 to 90 days so what are the two important questions which are asked that this suture dexan is having highest affinity for adherence to e coli and staph aureus and it is absorbed in 60 to 90 days now there is a suture which is having lowest affinity for adherence to e coli and staph aureus and that suture is absorbed in 180 days and what's the name this is pds also known as polydioxanon now see this is polydioxanon also known as pds clear important point that this suture is having lowest affinity lowest affinity for adherence to e coli and staph aureus so one advantage it is associated with lesser risk of infection and what is the second advantage that it is absorbed in 180 days it means this suture is specifically used for those anastomoses where there is increased risk of anastomotic leak so if you remember Whipple's procedure in Whipple's procedure we discussed that at pancreatico jejunostomy which anastomosis pancreatico jejunostomy is having maximum risk of anastomotic leak so at pancreatico jejunostomy with suture we use we use pds right so it is absorbed you have to remember absorbed in how many days 180 180 days clear and that's why it is used in Whipple's procedure specially for which anastomosis we use it at pancreatico jejunostomy at pj now see what's the name of this suture can you see here it's proline and it's written polypropylene so the name is proline it is also known as polypropylene okay it is monofilament or polyfilament so it is monofilament absorbable or non-absorbable suture so this is non-absorbable suture so this is monofilament and it's non-absorbable suture clear now you can see here that one artery forceps is being applied here if you have seen that whenever we are using proline especially you have seen it during suturing of rectus sheath in laparotomy so you notice that at one end of the suture mosquito forceps are being applied so why we apply the mosquito forceps because this suture is having very strong memory what is the meaning of memory memory means tendency to return to its unpackaged state so what are the problems or disadvantages of this suture proline that it is having strong memory it is having poor knot security so strong memory there is poor knot security and there is lack of elasticity lack of elasticity clear these are the disadvantages but we want to convert disadvantages into advantages right so since there is lack of elasticity right so we can use this suture for airtight anastomosis and the airtight anastomosis is required where it is required in cases of vascular anastomosis so this suture is used for vascular anastomosis and this question was asked in neat so what are the uses of proline we discussed that 
it is used in vascular anastomosis because it can create watertight anastomosis and second we use proline for rectus sheath for rectus sheath so these are the important questions related to sutures now two questions which are frequently asked that which suture is absorbed in how many days and at this particular site and in this particular anastomosis which suture is used so see the questions so first sutures which are absorbed in 60 days so we discussed which suture is absorbed in 60 days yes it's the cat cut second is 60 to 90 days so the sutures which are absorbed in 60 to 90 days and the mnemonic is VCD. Clear? So we discussed V, Vicryl, C, Chromic, Catgut, D, Dexan and the other name of Dexan is Polyglycolic Acid. So this is Vicryl, this is Chromic, Catgut and D, this is the Dexan also known as polyglycolic acid then 90 to 120 days clear so we discussed monocryl also known as polyglycoprone so monocryl also known as polyglycoprone and what was the question we discussed that this monocryl is used for subcuticular suturing and 180 days we discussed just now which suture is absorbed in 180 days and this is PDS also known as polydioxanone. Now see the site and the uses of suture. So generally for skin suturing which suture is used? Silk. So see silk. What is the use of this silk suture? Generally we use it for the skin. We discussed what is the use of vicryl and we discussed the mnemonic also it is used in the organs where there is stone formation and the mnemonic was cub c means cbd u means ureter b means bladder so this is cbd ureter and bladder clear then we discussed proline what's the use of proline it is used for vascular anastomosis vascular anastomosis and what else it is used for suturing of rectus sheath so this is used for rectus sheath simple and for tendons which suture is used for tendons we use nylon right so nylon nylon is used for tendons now if you have seen the question of aims and need nowadays they started asking the suturing principles also means suppose you are going to perform the laparotomy right and you are going to give any kind of skin incision and suppose the length of incision is x what should be the length of suture so this is known as jenkins rule right so one by one we are going to discuss the important points related to suturing so first what is the jenkins rule clear so if the length of incision is x what should be the length of suture required 4x it means is the ratio of suture length to wound length so ratio of suture length to wound length and this should be 4 is to 1 now suppose there is elliptical incision so this is the elliptical incision and you want that the healing should occur without tension and if this width if the width of this elliptical incision is x the width is x what should be the length of incision so it should be 3x so for elliptical incision you want that healing should occur without tension so the length to width ratio should be 3 is to 1 right so second important question 
for elliptical incision to heal without tension length to width length to width ratio should be 3 is to 1 now see whenever we are going for skin suturing imagine that you are going for skin suturing after laparotomy and these are the sutures which are being applied can you see these are the sutures clear and see this is the thickness of skin this is the skin thickness skin thickness is x if the skin thickness is x what should be the distance between the sutures yes so it should be 2x so for skin suturing what is the ratio of distance between the sutures to the skin thickness so here you can see the skin thickness is x and the distance between sutures this is 2x right so for skin suturing the ratio of distance between sutures to skin thickness to skin thickness and that should be 2 is to 1 clear so it is very very easy to remember according to jenkins rule suture length to wound length ratio 4 is to 1 for elliptical incisions to heal without tension length to width ratio should be 3 is to 1 and for the skin suturing distance between sutures to the skin thickness ratio should be 2 is to 1 now we are going to discuss the types of knots okay and these are being asked in aims as well as need from the last three four years continuously now see first is square knot or reef knot so see how we are going to take square knot or reef knot see this is the cable and this end is laptop end which is connected to laptop and this is the phone end okay now see what i'm going to do in this case i'm going to take the first throw right and can you see now the laptop end comes in my right hand so what i did in first throw i crossed okay and after that what i'm going to do in the second throw in second throw again i'm going to cross clear so now the laptop end comes into my left hand okay this is the square knot or reef knot and if you see what happens here can you see the both ends are together and here also you can see the both ends are together so this is square knot or reef knot so what we did in first throw we crossed in second throw also we crossed so this is relatively stable knot so this is square knot or reef knot how many throws we are going to take so this is the first throw and this is the second throw and in each throw we crossed so we take two throws crossing is done in each throw crossing is done in each throw clear and this is relatively stable knot this is relatively stable knot okay how to identify it's very very easy to identify see if you see the ends can you see here the ends are together can you see here the ends are together right so here you see both ends are below and here both of these ends are above so here you can see if you see the ends which is of red color yes that is above the blue and here you can see the ends which are of blue color these two ends are below the red clear so if both ends are together either above or below this is square knot or reef knot second is surgeon's knot surgeon's knot is also very easy to identify now see this is the laptop end and this is the phone end okay now in first throw can you see i'm taking the first wrap and then i'm taking the second wrap so how many wraps are taken in first throw in surgeon's knot can you see we took two wraps clear and after that in second throw again i'm going to cross and how many wraps single okay so in first throw you can see two wraps in second throw one wrap and in both throws we are going to cross so this is what surgeon's knot so here you can see this is surgeon's knot 
so there are two wraps in first row two wraps in first row right so you can see this is one this is two two wraps and we have to cross and in second row there is a single wrap so one wrap in second row clear and crossing is done in each throw so insurgents not crossing is done in each throw clear now third is granny knot also known as pseudo square knot okay now see this is the laptop end this is a phone end what i'm going to do i'm going to take can you see i'm going to take here i'm going to take the first row and again you can see the phone end comes in my right hand clear means i didn't cross after that again i'm going to take what the second throw and here also i'm not going to cross clear so i didn't cross so in this two wraps are there and crossing is not done and if you are going to see the ends see here carefully if you see the ends one end is above and one end is below can you see here so the ends are not together can you see the ends are not together so this is granny knot or pseudo square knot and granny knot or pseudo square knot is not a very stable knot so this is granny knot also known as pseudo square knot pseudo square knot clear and you saw that how many throws are there we take two throws clear but crossing is not done and since crossing is not done in any throw so it's relatively unstable so this is relatively unstable and it's more prone to slip right it's more prone to slip now how to identify it's very easy see one end is above and one end is below so both ends are not together see the colored picture so if you see this colored picture you can see that this end which is of red color yes one is below this blue and one is above this blue color okay and here you can see the end which is of blue color one is above and one is below so how to remember if these are the ends if ends are together either above or below the knot is stable and that is reef knot or square knot and if it's like this what one end is above and one end is below it means it's not very stable and this is granny knot or pseudo square knot now let's see all the three together how to identify and how to differentiate easiest is surgeon's knot why because in first throw we are going to take how many wraps two wraps so if there are two wraps in first throw generally this is surgeon's knot now see if there is one wrap if crossing is done yes it is reef knot or square knot if crossing is not done it is granny knot how to identify see the edges if the ends are together it's square knot or reef knot if ends are not together it's granny knot so you can easily crack any image based question related to the knots now we are going to discuss the needle first what are the parts of needle and then we will discuss what are the types of needle okay see the parts you can see here the suture is being attached to the needle and this end is known as swayed end in the needle where suture is attached that is known as swayed end and the opposite end which is pointed and that is known as pointed end or point and this is known as body or shaft sometimes in the needle you will notice that there is an eye so there is a hole known as eye and why are this eye i am going to insert the suture clear so these are the parts of needle now the question where we are supposed to hold the needle with needle holder so you can see this is 2/3 from pointed end and 1/3 from swayed end so where you are supposed to hold the needle with needle holder at the junction of 2/3 from the pointed end and 1/3 from the swayed end now see the types of needle broadly we are going to divide the needle into two types one is round body and second is cutting needles cutting needles can be conventional cutting or reverse cutting so see the types of needle 
needles can be round body or cutting clear this cutting is further divided into conventional cutting its conventional cutting clear and second is reverse cutting reverse cutting okay so it's very easy to remember suppose this is the needle clear and what you do you take the cross section and if you see the cross section here the cross section appears round so if the cross section is round it's round body and if it's triangular it's cutting now in conventional cutting the cross section is like this and in reverse cutting the cross section is like this it means in conventional cutting the cross section is triangular with apex can you see apex pointing inwards and in reverse cutting the apex is pointing outwards okay now round body needles are further divided into round body needles can you see the cross section is round clear so round body needles are circular so these are further divided into taper point and blunt point okay now see the point of needle or pointed end of needle if you see this pointed end of needle if it is tapering if the pointed end of needle is tapering clear this is taper point and if it's blunt can you see if it is blunt it is known as blunt point so round body needles are further divided into taper point if the end is tapering and blunt point if the end is blunt so we discussed the cutting needle conventional cutting and reverse cutting so here you can see the cross section is triangular but in conventional cutting it is pointing inwards can you see pointing inwards and in reverse cutting can you see it is pointing outwards right now the basic difference you saw this round body needles are non traumatic and if round body needles are non traumatic generally these needles are used for delicate structures so what are those delicate structures bladder and bowel and these cutting needles these are traumatic needles so what is the advantage that these needles are used to pierce the tough structures like skin sheath fascia okay so one by one we are going to discuss round body needles these are non traumatic and since these are non traumatic we are going to use these needles for delicate structures and what are those delicate structures so we are using these needles for bladder and bowel it is used for bladder and bowel okay now cutting needles cutting needles are traumatic these needles are traumatic right and that's why these needles are used to pierce tough structures so we are using these needles for tough structures right like skin skin sheath and fascia skin sheath and fascia now we are going to discuss the suturing techniques okay now see first simple interrupted suture so first is simple interrupted suture how we do it and how to identify in exam now here you can see this needle is inserted at right angle to the incision right angle it is going to pierce the edge and after that it is going to pierce the second edge and again it comes at right angle so what is this it is going to pierce the skin of incision at right angle going to traverse both the edges and it is coming out or it is going to exit again at the right angle clear and when we are going to come out we are going to apply the knots clear so can you see here needle is inserted at right angle to the incision traverses both of the edges and then exit again at the right angle so if you see this is the skin incision clear now i'm going to pierce it at right angle clear 
and again this needle is going to pierce and then it is going to come out at right angle and after that the knots are applied clear so this is simple interrupted suture so here needle is inserted at right angle to the incision inserted at right angle to incision then it traverses or pass through pass through both edges of wound clear so it pass through both edges of wound and then exit again at right angle clear so this is simple interrupted suture now see the continuous suture what we do in this case so the name is continuous so here the first suture is just like simple interrupted suture okay and rest of the sutures are taken continuously until the far end is reached have a look so here i'm going to take the first suture which is simple interrupted clear and after that what i'm going to apply it like this so can you see rest of the sutures are applied continuously so here it's like this so the rest of sutures are applied continuously until the far end is reached and when the far end is reached we are going to tie the far end by a body knot so how it looks like so see this continuous suture here the first suture is like simple interrupted suture and then you can see i'm going to take the suture can you see and this suture is being taken continuously until the far end is reached and when we are reaching the far end here we are going to tie the knot or secure the knot with a body knot clear so what's done in this continuous suture here the first suture this is identical to simple interrupted suture clear and rest sutures are continuous rest of sutures these are taken continuous until the far end is reached clear and the far end is secured with a body knot so far end this is secured with it is secured with a body knot clear so what happens here you can see this is Aberdeen knot and what we do in this Aberdeen knot here you can see we tie so here we are going to tie free end to the loop of last suture so tie free end can you see here free end to the loop of last suture clear and what is the example you have seen in laparotomy when we are suturing the rectus sheath with the proline generally we take the continuous suture now third is mattress suture mattress suture okay these are frequently asked nowadays especially in neater names see sometimes because of trauma or because of musculoskeletal trauma or soft tissue injury is there and what happens the wound edges are not approximated clear and it's difficult to approximate the wound edges because these are irregular so whenever there is irregularity in depth or disposition of wound edges and we have to approximate it we can use the mattress suture if we have to invert or evert the edges we use the mattress suture okay so what is the use of mattress sutures so it is used for eversion or inversion eversion or inversion of wound edges clear and it helps in accurate approximation of wound edges so it helps in accurate approximation of 
wound edges and specially for which wound edges the wound edges which are which are irregular in depth or disposition so for which wound edges which are irregular in depth or disposition now two types of mattress are there one is horizontal mattress and the second is vertical mattress okay it's very very easy to remember and it's very easy to differentiate now if you see the first one is horizontal mattress and the second is vertical mattress okay what's the difference see this is horizontal mattress right and this is the vertical mattress okay now see how we are going to take the horizontal mattress first right now see i'm going to pierce the skin edges clear like this at right angle so generally the initial suture is taken as a simple interrupted suture so what the needle is going to pierce both of the skin edges at right angle now when this is taken out can you see here when it's taken out this needle moves horizontally can you see and again it is going to pierce the wound edges clear and then knots are tied so here needle moves horizontally and traverse both edges of the wound again so since it is traversing horizontally this is horizontal mattress and what happens in vertical mattress can you see here i'm going to pierce the both edges of wound at right angle just like sim simple interrupted suture and then you can see the needle moves vertically and again it is going to pierce both edges of the wound so here the needle moves vertically so this is vertical mattress right so first is horizontal mattress and second is vertical here in both initial suture it's like or it's made like simple interrupted suture clear in horizontal mattress needle moves horizontally needle can you see here needle moves horizontally in vertical mattress can you see it moves vertically so needle moves horizontally in horizontal in horizontal mattress and in vertical mattress it is going to move vertically and then again traverses both edges of wound again so here it traverses both edges both edges of wound again clear so this is horizontal mattress and vertical mattress now easiest method how you can identify or crack the question easily in exam if it's an image based question you can see this is the line of incision this is the line of incision and if you see the horizontal mattress in horizontal mattress yes it is parallel to line of incision so in horizontal mattress the suture is parallel to line of incision and if you see the line of incision in vertical mattress it is perpendicular to the line of incision so this is how you can easily identify the horizontal and vertical mattress so now see how we take horizontal mattress can you see the needle is going to pierce the both edges of the wound clear so just like interrupted suture now can you see the needle moves horizontally and if needle moves horizontally and i'm going to tie the knot this is horizontal mattress and see if the needle is going to move vertically here can you see the needle is going to move vertically so this is vertical mattress now see subcuticular suture subcuticular suture now in this image can you see you can see only the ends rest of the suture can you see the rest of the suture is buried under the skin so this is subcuticular suturing and we discussed that for this subcuticular suturing which suture is used it's monocryl or polyglycoprone what is the advantage of this subcuticular suturing that there is no scar clear so generally this subcuticular suturing or subcuticular suture is used for cosmetic areas right so the most commonly used suture is the monocryl also known as poly 
glycoprone clear and it is specially used in the skin where cosmetic appearance is important cosmetic appearance is important okay what is a prerequisite here that here the edges should be approximated so the skin edges should be approximated then only we are going to take the subcuticular suture now see this image what kind of wound is here can you see there is a circular wound can you see there is a circular wound and if you see the suture you can see that here the suture is applied parallel to edges of the circular wound so when the suture is applied parallel to the edges of circular wound and when you are going to tie it it is just like purse string so this is known as purse string suture you have seen the purses basically which are which were distributed in 90s especially in the marriages red colored purse and there was a string like this so this is what purse string suture clear so here you noticed what is done basically in a circular wound in a circular wound the suture is applied parallel to the edges of wound parallel to edges clear now what is the use of this purse string suture we discussed in hernia surgery when we, we were performing herniotomy we were taking the purse string suture and then only can you see this was the sac and we were applying purse string suture like this and then we were excising the sac redundant sac second in appendectomy also we take purse string suture so in surgery what is the role of purse string suture it is used in herniotomy or hernia surgery and second it is used in appendectomy clear so these are the important types of suturing techniques now what are the guidelines for day of suture removal means on which particular day sutures should be removed it varies from one side to another clear so see see the area and day of suture removal day of suture removal clear so in eyelids and lip generally the suture should be removed on third to fourth day so eyelids and lip it is removed on third to fourth day right now in eyebrows and nose it should be removed on third to fifth day eyebrows and nose it should be removed on third to fifth day clear and if you see the rest of face excluding ear rest of face excluding ear generally the suture should be removed on third to fourth day so rest of face Three to four days clear so roughly what you noticed that generally in phase we are supposed to remove the sutures on third to fourth day excluding ear in years we are going to remove the sutures on 10 to 12th day now see in scalp the sutures are removed on sixth to eighth day so it should be removed between six to eight days similarly in chest and abdomen 8 to 10 days so chest and abdomen it should be removed in 8 to 10 days clear and if you are talking about ear and hand and see in ear and hand the sutures are removed in 10 to 14 days right so in ear and hand the sutures are removed in 10 to 14 days clear and if you see back extremities foot and sole in back extremities foot and sole here the sutures are removed in 12 to 14 days right so back extremities 
foot and sole. Here we remove the sutures in 12 to 14 days. Clear? Now how you can remember it easily? We discussed that face related area. Okay? Except ears. Clear? So in face, generally the sutures are removed in 4 days. So broadly, we are removing the sutures in 4 days. Clear? In scalp, in chest and abdomen, it is removed in 8 days broadly. So how to remember 4 into 2. So in scalp, chest and abdomen, it is 4 into 2, 8 days. So here it is 4 into 2. Clear? And in the rest of the regions, can you see? In ear, hand, back, extremities, foot and sole, it is 4 into 3. And what? 12 days. Clear? So this is the easiest way to remember. Now we are going to discuss the bowel anastomosis. But before discussing bowel anastomosis, I want to tell you the layers in the bowel. See? So here you can see this innermost is mucosa. Okay? Then this is submucosa. Clear? And these two layers are of muscularis propria. And you must be knowing that in muscularis propria, there is inner circular layer and outer longitudinal layer. Clear? And this outermost is serosa. Right? Two, three principles which we follow in bowel anastomosis. First principle that whenever we are doing the bowel anastomosis, you have to include the submucosa. Why? Submucosa is having high collagen content. Clear? And it is the strongest layer of bowel. That's why it should always be included in the suture. So during anastomosis, you have to take the submucosa in anastomosis. One. And in bowel anastomosis, the anastomosis should be inverted to prevent the risk of leak. Clear? So two important principles which we follow in bowel anastomosis. First, that the edges should be inverted. So, there should be inverted edges and we have to include submucosa into anastomosis. So, in anastomosis, when we suture, we have to include the submucosa because of its high collagen content and this is the strongest layer. Now, what are the types of bowel anastomosis? It can be single layer. It can be double layer or stapled anastomosis. Clear? So, one by one we are going to discuss. Initially, we were favoring double layer anastomosis that is known as Cocker's two layer anastomosis. But nowadays, single layer extra mucosal anastomosis is preferred. So, first see single layer extra mucosal anastomosis. Single layer. extra mucosal anastomosis clear see the peak so this is halstead favored matheson advocated this is halstead favored matheson advocated clear now see what is done here here you can see this is mucosa so here the mucosa is not taken, right? And rest all the layers, submucosa, muscularis propria, serosa, all the layers are taken in one layer. So that's why this is known as single layer extra mucosal anastomosis. And this question was asked in NEET PG that nowadays which type of bowel anastomosis is preferred is the single layer extra mucosal anastomosis. This is preferred for bowel anastomosis nowadays it is preferred for bowel anastomosis clear initially we used to do cocker's two layer anastomosis but nowadays single layer extra mucosal anastomosis is preferred now see this this is cocker's two layer anastomosis so there here it's cocker's two layer anastomosis Okay. Now see, what is the first layer? If you see, 
this is the first layer and what is the name of first layer this is known as albert layer initially we were using catgut clear so first layer we were using catgut other name this is albert albert layer clear so in this we were using catgut continuously so this is also known as continuous catgut layer but nowadays at the place of catgut we are using vicryl so what is the other name this is also known as continuous catgut layer right and what's the change nowadays at the place of catgut we are using vicryl so in first layer what we use the vicryl and the second layer is lambert layer and this is interrupted silk layer so you can see here this is the second layer this is the second layer and that is also known as lambert layer lambert layer clear and this is also known as interrupted silk layer so we, here we are taking silk or using silk for suturing clear initially this was favored this is cockers two layer anastomosis but nowadays we favor single layer extra mucosal anastomosis the third type is stapled anastomosis and for stapled anastomosis we use two types of stapler usually one is linear stapler and one is circular stapler okay so see which one is linear stapler which one is circular stapler now here you can see this is the linear stapler okay and how we are going to use this linear stapler so if you see this image suppose these are the two ends of bowel okay so i'm in going to insert one limb into one part of bowel second limb into another and after that i'm going to fire the stapler when i'm going to fire the stapler what will happen there is communication so what happens it is going to create the side to side anastomosis can you see so here this linear stapler is going to create the side to side anastomosis still these ends are open and these ends are closed with the help of transverse stapler can you see so here these ends are being closed with transverse stapler right so what is the use of this linear stapler it is used to create side to side anastomosis side to side anastomosis clear and in this case ends ends are closed by transverse stapler transverse stapler right now what is the use of this circular stapler this is circular stapler generally this circular stapler is used for end to end anastomosis clear so generally in which cases end to end anastomosis especially the colorectal anastomosis colo anal anastomosis so whenever we are going for low anterior resection and we go for end to end anastomosis of bowel we are using circular stapler even in stapler hemorrhoidopexy we are using the circular stapler so here you can see how we are using this circular stapler for end to end anastomosis clear so circular staplers are used for end to end anastomosis and generally where we are using these staplers in surgery we are using it in low anterior resection and stapler hemorrhoidopexy we are using it in stapler hemorrhoidopexy clear so these are the stapled anastomosis so this is all about sutures and anastomosis